The secret spice you want to sprinkle into your design to make the most out of your ray tracing dish is... Mwah. When I first implemented my stuff, I got into performance problems that almost made me give up on the whole thing. Then, out of nowhere, I was inspired by this video. Here's a short summary for the super busy fancy technology voxel voxel ray marching voxel 3D space voxel geometry. The voxel 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 brick voxel voxels box voxel thank you very much for watching i gave bricks a try even though i felt pretty skeptical at that point and oh boy was i shocked on the improvements it made let's look into it shall we let's go the magical compression property of the trees come with its own set of challenges for one there is some additional structural data that needs to be stored if you haven't watched my video about trees already here it is i would recommend watching it first if you are not familiar with them but in a nutshell just imagine tree structures as a type of graph specifically directed acyclic graph which divides space up into smaller areas recursively one example of this is a quad tree to access a voxel, you need to start from the largest node within the tree, working your way down through smaller and smaller nodes. You do that until that one tiny cube is revealed sitting on a leaf, which is the voxel itself. The leaf nodes, generally, take up the smallest space inside the box tree. That is how I call it. And this may contain a single voxel, so let's run with that for now. Let's look at a single node containing a single voxel. That's the cube filled to the brim with data. No subdivisions, nothing else, just raw information. Voxel data stores even less info than a triangulated mesh because it's quite strict in the information it represents. But even in this form, there is some overhead required. For example, a node's relative position or data about its children to be stored. This and some potential other stuff like occupied bits, normals, material information, the, the list goes on. If the extent of the tree is 1, then this is relatively effective, albeit quite impractical. Let's say one leaf node containing a single voxel has an overhead of X. The bigger the tree is, the more nodes we need to store the same amount of information, as one node can divide space into a given number of slots. Ah, slots. So with every added node, the overhead, which is the metadata stored, and also the complexity required for the ray tracing algorithm to fetch the data, increases. And if that wouldn't be enough, Together with the size of the covered area, the number of nodes increase exponentially. I would show you some charts, but I'm not sure what good it would make as I was just pulling numbers out of my arm. In contrast, a simple matrix of the same size has no such overhead, but takes up an impossible amount of space with lots of wasted space in it, where there is no useful data, and iterating it is uh, costly as well. The whole use of a tree-like structure lies within the possibility to skip large empty spaces in order to be more effective. I talk about this in one of my previous videos about occupied bits. Link is in the description if you're interested. Also in the index card or whatever that's called. Enter bricks. Instead of storing a single voxel in the leaf nodes, the library has n cubed matrices of voxels, also called voxel bricks. This decreases overhead where it hurts the most. Since smaller nodes have more overhead relative to the size they represent, storing bricks inside leaf nodes makes their structure better because it increases the size a leaf node covers, while still allowing for empty or uniform space compression on larger nodes. Having data in a tree-like structure also means that modifying it requires insertion, deletion and reordering of nodes. That is quite a complex thing to do and it's supposed to be done as fast as possible to not waste any precious frames. The best way to optimize this is to eliminate it. More precisely, avoid it whenever possible. 
64 trees have this advantage over oak trees because, also mentioned in the tree video, each node contains more and larger children nodes, which greatly simplify the actual tree structure, reducing the need to rearrange its guts. And bricks also help with that as leaf nodes contain a matrix of voxels instead of a single cubic cube cube, restructuring while updating the tree data is needed way less frequently. Building on this notion, when bricks have uniform data, meaning every voxel in it has the same value, then it can be stored as a single value instead of an n by n by n matrix of values that is quite similar to nodes within the tree. In voxel hugs, this is mentioned as solid brick data. A brick can either be empty, solid, or parted. Parted meaning that the brick contains a mixture of voxels. A whole brick takes up a single voxel worth of data if it is empty or solid, or it is stored as a matrix if it has mixed content. In the future, I am planning to take this even further to store a sparse representation of a brick or variations of it. The idea is pretty simple. When there's only a few voxels set in the whole brick, there's no need to store a full matrix. I'm yet to investigate on how much this would be beneficial in practice and with what parameters, but I am confident this could be a potentially great addition to the library and a great addition to my experience either way. Pro tip time! One important aspect of structure is largely overlooked when designing trees for storing voxel data, which is the structure of the leaf itself. A simple structure often comes to mind where a leaf node is containing a single brick, a matrix of voxels, and that's fine. That's a perfectly good structure and it's simple. You can think of a node either having other nodes as children or a voxel brick which contains the precious data to be displayed. So this way when traversing the graph depth first you can safely assume that there's going to be a single voxel brick at the bottom so iterating it is relatively easy. In practice, however, this structure produces much more nodes than needed, which results in wasting space and iteration time. Having 64 bricks per leaf node is much better. This way, a node either has a maximum of 64 children or a maximum of 64 bricks. This reduces the required nodes for the same amount of data, decreasing data size and iteration time with the expense of some additional complexity. And um, I'm not kidding here, this structure has a lot more edge cases than the previous one. If you don't believe me, just look at how I implemented data updates. Or better yet, try to mess with it. You are free to do that as the library is open source. Here's another bonus tip. Most use cases with games work on the surface voxels mainly. If this is also the case for you, then you might want to filter the data you're working with and restrict it to voxels near the surface. But if you have transparent, translucent or any other kinds of see-through materials, then this becomes a bit trickier. An exception for this is water because, well, water is, is a lie. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. You're too much raining. <laughs> As in the majority of cases, water is designed to be a post-processing effect because, well, it's uh, expensive as fuck. Would you want me to talk about this? I don't think this fits into the current video, but this might be a good topic for something in the future. Lin does this too in his legendary engine that bred life to a whole generation of voxel pushers. A bunch of starry-eyed puppies we are. <laughs> this is one detail that Briggs doesn't help with, by the way, because it restricts the tree to a simpler structure, so it permits less filtering like this. But I haven't investigated this yet, so take this with a grain of salt. I think the perks of using bricks are still pretty neat, though. That's all, folks. Hey, Survivor! You got through the video, congrats! I hope listening to it was as much fun as it was making it. Design videos like this are long, so if you are here, I'm deeply honored by your attention. If you are working on the next big voxel hit game, chat me up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And with this video published, we now have full context for the GPU streaming video. Woohoo! Finally! I'm not sure if you followed the foreshadowing up until now, but oh boy, am I eager to finally share that with you. Well, anyway, tell me what you think. Leave a comment, like the video, subscribe. It's really, really great if you do that. No worries if not, though. Have a great weekend. Have, have weekends all week.
Yeah, boy! Bye. <laughs>